and I garden right on the edge of zones 5A and 6B. It's early fall here, and I noticed while cleaning up this beautiful, beautiful yarrow that is still blooming. So I wanted to take some time to tell you all about yarrow because it is one that everyone should have in their garden. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna take a look at this one and then we're gonna look at some other ones that I have. So the color of this one is called pomegranate. And this is the fresh, this is a fresh bloom right here. These are blooms that are getting ready to bloom. And then it fades to these beautiful lighter, lighter pink colors. And I want you to see um, how green and lush this plant is. I have not watered this plant once this year. And we have had, um, I'm going into um, almost week six right now, of absolutely no rain. You want to deadhead the blooms when they get, otherwise you're gonna start getting brown ones like this. Um, and the more you deadhead them, the more that they will bloom. You can see right here where I've cut the other blooms off earlier this year. There, if you wanna collect seeds, you can collect the seeds of these seed heads right here. They'll be in, in there. Let's see if I can get this to focus. So anyhow, they're real easy to start with seed. And now this plant can be um, a little bit aggressive. I kind of like the way it spreads, but one good way to help stop that a little bit is to deadhead them so you don't have the seeds all over the place. Okay, let's go take a look at some other ones. Another reason that you want to deadhead your yarrow is because they end up looking like this. While the base of the plant will stay pretty lush and green, then the flower stalks themselves are going to turn brown and be pretty yucky. Now, as they fade, and you saw that in the, the other ones that I showed you, um, this, is, um, this is Proven Winter's Fire, what is it? Fire Peach Sky. You can see how it fades Fades to a different color. This one starts out a peachy color and it fades to yellow and then of course and then it gets um, turns to the brown. So you just want to, when you um, cut them back, you just go down, right down to the edge and just snip them off right there. I'll show you this up close. These are gorgeous. It's a gorgeous color. Yarrow is um, a great pollinator. It attracts bees and butterflies like crazy. So this one I was showing you, this is a native plant from Ohio that was um, dug up out of my mom's yard. Um, it has white flowers and of course then they turn this, this um, brown. One of the differences that I wanna show you between the natives and the hybrids are the leaves. I'm gonna pick one off of there. This is a hybrid leaf, and this is a native leaf. Can I get them to focus? Um, if you can see the difference between these leaves on here are closer together. The, the native one is like maybe a little more ferny, if you want, if, so to speak. So that's one difference between them. And I'm sure that maybe some of the other hybrids that I don't have, they might be a little different in their leaf structure too. They like um, very dry, not very dry soil, but extremely well draining soil. Um, and one thing, and I can show you what happened here. This is a Monrovia plant, Millie Rock Rose Yarrow. Beautiful pink color. And I got this on clearance at Lowe's and it got too wet and it lost its middle. Um, that can also be a sign of age, you know, because a lot of perennials, they will like die out in the middle and then as they spread out. This one I'm sure was too wet. Even as I have had it, I've had a tendency to get it to dry out. So that's what it did. But, but what I wanted to show you here is how we can divide them. Now this is soaking wet. So that's why it's way too wet. They need, they need a lot more drainage. So if you can see in here, see how there's a section here. There's a section here and here. I can divide each and every one of those up into a new plant. 
And that is what my plan is. I think it's going to be gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Yarrow makes an extremely well cut flower, very long lasting cut flower. Um, and then when you cut it, you know, to for a cut flower to bring it in the house or whatever, cut it really low, like I just showed you when you're even when you're deadheading. Just you want to cut this one's no, oh, you want to go all the way down to the stalk to cut it. And let's see. This is um, this is a native that was dug up at my mom's house too, and my sister says it's purple. Now I don't know; I've never seen a purple, a native purple yarrow, but we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna plant that one. And then this is a um, sunny seduction yarrow. Should be uh, pretty. I wanted you to see how lush and green that other one was out there because we have had two frosts already. Our average frost date is usually mid October, and today is um, we had frost two weeks ago. Today's the 12th. We had already had frost two weeks ago twice. I've had frost. That plant looks absolutely fabulous still. Once they're established, they are drought tolerant. And as I said, I had not watered that one all summer. Um, and I'll walk over here and I'll show you a plant that was planted this spring or early summer that I have not watered but maybe a couple times and it's showing some stress. So first year, keep an eye on it. Next year, you should be good to go. This is the yarrow that I planted um, early summer. Um, it has not been watered now, oh goodness, probably for three weeks at least. It's showing some stress. It's, um, but there is some new growth on here. So I'm going to give it some water and um, maybe water it again before winter hits and hope that it survives. The blooms are, they bloom, they will bloom all summer um, as long as you keep deading, head, deadheading them. And they will bloom for quite a long time, probably three, four weeks, even without deadheading them. But if you cut them all back, then you will keep to seeing a continual flush of flowers. They dry really well. Um, you cut them, hang them in a cool, dark place upside down, and they maintain their collar very well. They are deer resistant. Um, they have a very bitter and pungent smell to them, their leaves. I see. Very pungent. Almost reminds me of a Russian sage, like a sage type smell, and the deer don't like that. Rabbits may mess with them a little bit, especially early in the spring when there's nothing else around. So I really hope that you get some yarrow and put it in your yard because I don't think you'll regret it. Um, some people worry about the spreading of them, but I find they're easy to contain. If, um, you know, if you don't want them there, dig it out and throw it away. They're, it's not an aggressively fast spreader, but it, they will spread, which is, um, you know, a lot of us like our perennials to do that. So. Okay, I hope you have a really awesome day. Thanks a lot for watching.